The Los Santos Carmen is one of two new locations added to GTA Online. Once you go into the Los Santos Carmen for the first time and watch the cutscene, you gain the ability to buy the new property, the auto shop. And what can you do with an auto shop? Well, actually quite a lot. Just like every other property in GTA Online, the auto shop is not just an auto shop. It also acts as a garage, a business, and a lot more. So in this video, I'm going to help you out. I'm going to tell you how it works, how to make the most money possible, what to buy, where to buy it, everything. So if you enjoyed this video, a thumbs up would be awesome. Subscribe for more stuff like this, and let's jump in. Once you're ready to buy your auto shop, open up your phone, go into Maze Bank for closures, and you're going to see five different auto shops to choose. I bought the one in La Mesa for $1.92 million. It's in a great location, literally just up the street from the LS car meet. But if that one's a bit too expensive for you, there's other options as well. Moving further north, you've got Burton for 1.83. Moving south, we have Rancho for 1.75 million. Moving back closer to the La Mesa one, just across the sewers is Mission Row for 1.67 million. And then the last one we haven't gone over is Strawberry for 1.705 million. Or if you have Twitch Prime, it's free. So for you guys that have Twitch Prime, unless you have like over over 10, 20 million dollars, just go with this one. And really, as a general buyer's guide for any of these, none of the locations are really that bad. So really just choose the one that you think is gonna work best for you. Like I said, for me, I was happy to pay more money because I got the La Mesa one that's just up the street from the car meet. If you're looking for the very best location, then probably go for La Mesa. Once you buy your auto shop, head inside. You're going to have to watch a cutscene and do a quick setup mission. Once that's out of the way, let's talk upgrades. For your first three options, you've got style, tint, and emblem. All of these are completely cosmetic. It really just depends how much money you've got to spare or how much money you want to spend in making this place look cool. If looks aren't important to you, then don't waste your money here. Moving on to staff, you can choose if you want zero, one, or two staff members to help you with the business side of this property. They cost $385,000 each, and from my experience, they're probably not worth it. If you're gonna get one, just get one. <laughs> But don't worry, I'll dive more into the numbers later on in the video. Moving into the extras, out of all of these optional upgrades, the one I would recommend for pretty much everyone is the personal quarters. This is going to add a bed, a wardrobe, and a gun locker in your auto shop, which basically lets you spawn here, which is pretty important. So if you're going to be using this business a lot, then probably just spend the extra 340k. Next up, we've got the car lift, and it's important to know that this isn't just one car lift. The business already comes with one. This would be adding a second one. Like it says on the screen there, it says a second car lift will allow you to repair two cars at once, ready for delivery. Double the work, double the pay, but that's not entirely true. Again, we'll get into that when we get into the numbers. Right now, I would say don't buy this. Now that you've bought your auto shop, let's have a look inside. Now, of course, for my live stream, I bought all of the optional upgrades. So this auto shop you're seeing is an absolute juicer. I've spent like, I think it was $4.4 .4 million to completely upgrade this. Looking at this, it's probably good though, because it'll help you decide what you do and don't want. So starting off on the far left side of the auto shop, you've got your new 10 car garage. That comes with every auto shop. You would have noticed that you didn't have to actually add a garage. This one comes included. You would kind of expect that, right? With an auto shop that it's going to have a garage. And in my opinion, this is probably the coolest looking garage in the game. Any vehicles you have in this garage, you can customize here on the spot. You don't need to drive it to Benny's, the LS car meet, Los Santos custom nothing you can do it right here which is a massive bonus moving back to the auto shop we have an arcade game here you know that's kind of cool i guess and actually a really helpful addition to the auto shop is this little jar of snacks right here before you go into any mission that this property helps you start up you're gonna want to fill up on snacks you never want to be in a gunfight without having the ability to heal and also a really nice addition as well even though it's really small you could collect all snacks at once now instead of having to spam the button like 50 times. Rockstar, thank you. <laughs> This right here is a car lift, and over to the left is the optional second car lift that you can choose to add. This lets you run the business side of the auto shop. And for anyone who used the vehicle warehouse in the import-export DLC, kind of picture this as a dumbed down version of that. A lot more simple and not as profitable. Every once in a while, Sasanta will send you a text saying that there's a vehicle ready to be modified and sold. When you get that text, that means that a car is going to be here ready for you to modify. 
From there, your job is pretty simple. All you need to do is kit the car out exactly how the customer wants. The instructions will be on the bottom of your screen. It's pretty hard to mess up. Modifying any vehicle is going to cost you $35,000. From there, you have two options. You can choose to sell and deliver the vehicle yourself, or you can sell and let one of your staff members deliver the vehicle. If you sell the vehicle yourself, that's going to take a few minutes. Try not to crash or damage the vehicle to ruin the price. But if you do end up selling the vehicle without any damage, to it, you're going to get $60,000. Now, don't forget, we did spend $35,000 upgrading it. So our profit there is only $25,000. And you're probably thinking that's not much money. I'm with you. At first, I thought I was missing something, but this is actually just how much the business gives you. I know, it's kind of disappointing. It's really not that much money. So I thought I must be doing something wrong. Next time this happened, I modified the car, and this time I got my staff member to deliver it. If you choose this option, it's probably going to take your staff member about 10 to 15 minutes to actually successfully sell the vehicle. And when they do, there's a good chance that they've actually crashed the vehicle. So the maximum amount of money you can make is $60,000. Half the time, whenever I get my staff to sell the vehicle, I actually only get just over $44,000 because they've crashed it, which, I mean, that's only over $9,000 profit because we spent $35,000 to modify the vehicle. And again, you're probably thinking, TGG, what's what's the go? That's like no money. Is this even worth it? And again, I, I don't know. I'm kind of confused at how bad the pay is for this. Which is why, in my opinion, I don't think it's worth spending the extra $650,000 for the second car lift or paying an extra $385,000 for an extra staff member if you even want to get one. It's not all doom and gloom though, because there's actually two more ways to make money with the auto shop. So let's head upstairs and on the right side of the stairs here, we've got an exotic car list. How the hell does this work? Well, if you've ever delivered a vehicle for Simeon, it kind of works the same way as that. This list refreshes daily, and any given day you can come have a look at which exotic cars are on the list. Some of these vehicles, like the Carbonazar, for example, spawn in free roam. NPCs are just going to be driving those around, and some vehicles, like the Ubermarked SC1, for example, doesn't spawn in free roam. Or at least they didn't, until now. So this gives us a few options. If we wanted to find a Carbonazar, for example, we know that vehicle spawns in free roam so just look around the city and try and find an npc driving one when we do you're gonna have to deliver that vehicle to the docks if you do that you're gonna get twenty thousand dollars for the vehicles that don't normally spawn in free roam the way you can get these is by looking out on your minimap for a blue dot if you're lucky enough to find one of these blue dots go up to it steal the vehicle and then deliver it to the docks as well for you guessed it twenty thousand dollars this is a cool little new addition to the game. Again, just like the actual car lift and the sort of import export, it doesn't really pay that much. $20,000 for a delivery, I mean, it's okay, but it's just not great compared to other money-making methods in the game. Overall, I'm not going to complain though, because just like the car lift import export, this also isn't the main part of this property. And you've been waiting for it. Let's move on to it now. The new mini heists, which is what GTA is calling content contract missions. To start these up, head up to the back of your auto shop on the planning board right here and really just choose whichever one you want to start up. Every single mission has two setups and a finale and honestly, all of them are a lot of fun. I was surprised at how fun these are. These will probably take most players around 25-ish minutes, probably between 20 and 30 minutes for most players. That's if you're doing it solo. If you're doing it with a group, you can probably smash these out in 20 minutes pretty easily. In total, there's six new contract missions, all of which are going to pay around 170 to 180,000. Plus, you're going to get an extra $75,000 for every first time completion. Another underrated part of these as well is you're going to get $10,000 each time you complete a setup. So no, these aren't going to earn you the type of money that heists will, but overall, it's still pretty decent pay. You complete two setup missions, that's $20,000. You complete the finale, which is between 160 to 180. We'll round that up to 200,000. 200,000 plus the $75,000 completion bonus, and all up, you got a minimum of 250,000, maximum of $275,000 for about half an hour's work. Not amazing, but not terrible. Plus, they're pretty fun. If you plan on bringing friends along, your friends are going to get $50,000 upon every completion. They're not going to get the full $170-ish thousand dollars, so just keep that in mind as well. 
At this stage, I'm not really planning on doing walkthroughs for each individual mission. I think they're pretty straightforward. But if I was going to give you a couple tips now for your two setup missions on every heist, try to use your fastest vehicle, whether that's a helicopter, an oppressor, anything. That's just in free mode. You can use whatever vehicle you want. You can also do it in an invite only lobby so that griefers can't attack you. For the finale, though, you are going to have to use one of the new tuner vehicles. If you can't afford any of the tuner vehicles that came with this update, don't worry. They're going to let you use to Santa's car for free. Now, some people are going to complain that you can't use your oppressors and your futuristic vehicles in the finale, but I think that's what actually makes this update unique. For anyone who played GTA Online at launch or even just the older GTAs, this is technically what Grand Theft Auto is meant to be. By definition, this is what Grand Theft Auto is. The whole theme around this update is car culture is back, and this makes it feel like it is. No futuristic vehicles, just fast cars and street level crime. This is what makes these unique, like I said, and this is why I almost prefer these over the heist. I, I don't know yet, it's too early to tell. So there you have it, that's the auto shop. Overall, not the best for making money. There's a lot of other businesses that are definitely better. If you love cars though, if you're a car guy, this is a must buy property. If you're only a money grinder and cars aren't really for you, you can probably miss this one. We'll wrap it up there. I hope this video helped. If it did, a thumbs up would be awesome. Subscribe for more stuff like this, and I'll see you in the next video. Poise! Favorite color, money green. Paper. I've been on my grind since I was in the seventh grade. Seventh grade. Had my first kid, I was only seven.